This episode of the Be Effective podcast is sponsored by Effective Fitness Training. If you were looking for a workout program specifically for police officers, Effective Fitness has you covered. Focusing on strength, mobility, agility, stability, and metabolic conditioning, the very crucial variables in fitness that directly correlate with the job. We know that shoulders, knees, and lower back are common injured areas within law enforcement, and we have to make sure we stay resilient in those areas. With the medical experts at Effective Fitness, they'll keep you in shape and have you training above the standard. For more information, visit effective.fitnesstraining on Instagram. Use code BEEFFECTIVE for 10% off the life of your membership. Episode 15. Mr. Aaron Lohman. Now, before I get into who Aaron is, he was once 425 pounds as a police officer. He made the change and has lost over 170 pounds over the last few years. 170 pounds. No fad diets, no crazy ass supplements. Just hard work, dedication, and one hell of a mindset. He's a 38-year-old father and NYPD sergeant. And he kind of goes into his story about why he wanted to make that change, what caused it, what light switch went off. And it's just an amazing story. Day one of his lifestyle change going to dive into this a little bit he gets a bike riding this bike and both tires blow out day one what a kick in the fucking dick but you know what that didn't stop him perseverance dedication and just straight up consistency Aaron is an extremely motivating individual and you might know him on Instagram as the huge fat loser which is funny because he's absolutely none of those things he's a fucking monster it was an honor to have this conversation with him without further ado episode 15 Mr. Aaron Lohman Yeah, and that's that's kind of how I was. And I I've been following you for quite some time and I really I do have the motivation. I don't know your whole story. Mm-hmm. I know that you were once fat. Yeah. And now you're not. Hugely fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen before and after pictures that you've that you've posted in. I definitely love your motivational stuff, man. It's it's right on point with basically what I believe and I think Everybody has a story to tell when it comes to what motivates them and what excuses they gave. And but my dad always told me, everybody has excuses, son, but it's results that matter, you know? And excuses just, they're like assholes, man. Everybody's got one. (laughs) 100%. 100%. So Aaron, so tell us, tell the people that are listening who you are, what you've done, and... I know you work for NYPD and may God have mercy on your soul there. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> say that for the record. But uh, who are you, bro? Uh, my name is Aaron Lohman. I'm a sergeant with the New York City Police Department. Um, and I mean, before that, uh, the list of priorities above that, obviously, I just, I'm a guy who just happens to be a sergeant. Is uh, I'm a dad, uh, I'm a husband, and I'm just like a dude. I'm a normal, everyday guy. I used to be 425 pounds, over 425 pounds. My scale only went up to 425. That's why I, you know, I tell people 425. And over the last couple of years, I lost 170 pounds. I'm just trying to be a better person every day, I'm trying to get in a better physical shape. Um, 
you know, and help people do the same thing. You know, I battled with, you know, internal demons, uh, depression, anxiety, all that stuff, food addiction, all these things that I never really resolved uh, from, you know, growing up in an abusive household and all this other shit. And uh, it manifested this way in like in some really dark ways, the obviously a self-destructive ways is, you know, just eating like constantly to cope with everything. And I just want to help people do the same thing. I want to help people, Realize that it was, I didn't start this thing until I was 35 years old. I'm sorry, 34 years old. And uh, I just want people to realize that, yo, it's not too late. You you know, get up on that horse, just keep on going, keep on improving every day and just getting better. I want, I want to help everybody who's willing to listen to my crazy psychosis to get better. <laughs> yeah. You know? So what about why? So why did you step on that scale that one day? Saw 425, saw your scale maxed out and said, what the fuck? So what happened was um, I had a nightmare at night. And uh, in my nightmare, obviously, I was at work. I was on the rooftop of a building. I got overpowered by a perp. And the perp threw me off the building. And then on my way down, I mean, it got like really real for me, like where I was visualized. My son wasn't born yet. I just had a daughter. I visualized her growing up without me. I visualized, you know, my funeral, like all this fucked up shit. And then I just woke up like in a panic, like, like what the fuck am I doing to myself? And then like simultaneously, um, I was, for I, this is going to sound really fucked up, but I was fortunate enough to get in trouble at work. And you're going to be like fortunate. How is that fortunate? Because uh, it really gave me, because up until that point, my life was work. Like my life was like, go catch the bad guy, fucking do the overtime, eat like shit, not die, go to sleep, like sleep three hours and start the same shit over again. Getting in trouble at work, like gave me the ability to refocus and just like realign my priorities and just, you know, take care of myself and take care of my family better. And uh, it, it was a blessing. That's what's so crazy about that nightmare is that's some people's reality. You know, yes. there's some people that have that have left this world that do have kids or their wife is pregnant. And you know, the fact that you had a, a dream probably saved your life. And just like you said, you got in trouble at work. And now did you go just cold Turkey? Did you just say, Hey, look, I'm going to go ahead and, or did you, was it small baby steps to get to where you are? Or? It was small baby steps. Cause like legitimately I'm not a personal trainer. I am now, but I wasn't then. I didn't know shit about fitness and nutrition like i knew nothing i just knew like okay i'm going to eat less i'm going to work out more i'm going to see what i can do uh what do i like to do and i you know decided i was going to track my calories with the uh, you know my fitness pal which was like the easiest way at first and take it slow and i said okay what type of exercise do i like to do i'm like i like riding my bike you know so i, I remember riding my bike as a kid with my brother so i went out and i bought a bike and the whole thing with that is like I looked up online, like, cause at that point I was like, am I too fat for a bike? You know? And I looked up, people said, you're too fucking, you're too fucking fat for a bike. You can't ride a bike. Yeah. And like, I'm like, all right, well, whatever. So I went out, I bought a bike anyway. And then the first day I got flat tires from hitting a bump and I'm like, yo, maybe I am too fucking fat for a bike. Maybe I should quit this. Maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. My yeah. first day, you know? And then, uh, I built upon that on baby steps. You know, I learned, I watched YouTube a lot. I looked on social media a lot. People like to shit on social media and all this stuff. But listen, it has helped me motivate me not only by watching other people, by and also by putting myself out there because it's really fucking easy to fail to yourself. Nobody's watching you, but if you're if people are watching you and they're looking at what you're doing, like you know, it's hard to fail in front of a lot of people. And there's been times where I'm like, I draw on that you know motivation from other people, be like people who say that. Listen, you know, I, I look up to you. You inspire me. You've helped me lose 50 pounds. And I'm like, I can't fucking quit on these people. No. And that's one reason why I continue police posts and doing what I do is for that same exact reason. You get those DMs. And even if it's one a month and it's, I started training because of you. I, you know, I'm losing two pounds a week. I started tracking my calories because of what you posted. Dude, you're changing somebody's life. And there is no greater gift than that and giving someone an, another sense of purpose giving them the ability to self-assess and say i need to make a change and man we see it a lot in law enforcement 
I mean, it's one of the most unhealthy professions in the world. I mean, yeah. it's extremely bad. Just like you said, you're talking about three hours of sleep, which is awful. I mean, sleep is one of the most important supplements, I like to say, that you can never take. Sleep, yeah. mental decompression, fitness. I mean, but dude, what a kick in the nuts is first day, your bike gets flat fucking tires. No, I was defeated. Like, I was embarrassed. Yeah, no because- shit. How it worked was like I rode my bike from my house to the train station and rode my train into the city to work. So now I got flat tires on a bike, walking it back to the train, but I'm in the city and I got to call my wife to come pick me up. So now I'm just like embarrassed. I'm like, I'm a fucking loser. This is never going to happen. Why did I do this? You know, you're already dealing, whenever you start something new, especially when it comes to like fitness, like you're already like questioning everything. You're like, am I doing this? Is this worth it? (laughs) I'm fucking 34 years old. Like, am I too old? Like all this shit. And then this shit happens and you're just like, fuck, you know? And, but just keep going, man. I mean, that's the, the, my best point of advice is like, just keep going. You fuck up, just keep going. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Just the perseverance and consistency of moving forward is always beneficial. Even though you feel like you take four steps back, you're going to take five steps forward at some point in time. And that's when you're really going to see the results. So what, so after that day of your, bike tires go, going flat, your wife coming to pick you up. What, what was your mindset going into it? Why did you not give up? Because the nightmare was really that real for me to the point where I knew that I, I needed to really change or I was going to die. I mean, looking, looking back now at photos of myself, I am like, I don't want to say I'm disgusted, whatever, but like I am disgusted with what I looked like. And what I remember what I felt like, but like, I knew that I had to change. I knew I genuinely felt deep down that like something bad was going to happen to me and that I was going to die, whether it be from getting thrown off of a building or that was a sign for something else. Like I was going to have a heart attack or something right. like I would, you know, people aren't, you know, not to be insensitive. People are not meant to look like that. People are not meant to be that overweight, especially in a law enforcement profession. You're just, you're just not. And I'm not saying you can't be a good cop because I was a good cop at that weight, but for yourself, for your own safety and for the safety of other people around you. Like you really need to be in the best shape you can possibly be to at least give yourself a fighting chance. Uh, you know, if some crazy shit happens, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I, I 100% agree with that. And I, you know, and some people I've been told I fat shame cops on police post and and me too. And that's, what's fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But I used to be that fat cop. And I'm telling you, like, whenever I, like, I'll make a post. I remember there was this guy. I use him in my presentation. Like, I'm fortunate enough to work in a unit now where I actually present the cops and take, like, try and teach them to take care of themselves psychologically and, and physically. And I put up a picture of a cop who sued the New York City Police Department and claimed that the job made him fat. Like, no. I mean, the, the job fuck? will give you all the tools necessary. Yeah. The job will give you all the tools necessary. They'll give you the sedentary lifestyle. They'll give you, like access to fast food all this shit is what i say right but at the end it's your choice you make those decisions whether you're going to be fat or not i made those decisions to be fat but then i also made those decisions to fix them and he could have done the same thing exactly well did he win that lawsuit i don't think so i hope not man like honestly i I really hope i mean new york would not surprise me if he did (laughs) with all this shit that's going on you guys have to deal with either yeah but (laughs) Moving forward from that point on, dropping the weight. I know you're really big into weightlifting, as am I, mm-hmm. and I think that's I think that's fucking awesome. And the fact that you, and some people, I guess, are still embarrassed, even though they are they are pushing progress on themselves and they're doing better. And even though it's not what people would consider, I guess, and I I, I, I fucking hate this term, but like Instagram worthy of a photo. But people who actually understand fitness and health and wellness know that progress is progress. If you went from 425 to 420, that's fucking progress. You yeah. should be 100% proud of that. And people around you should be very proud of that. Was your family very supportive? Were your friends very supportive of this movement? Uh, my wife is the most supportive person on earth. She's the best person in my life. Like she's like legit behind everything I do a hundred percent. Um, you know, obviously my kids are young, so they don't really know, but I mean, they like it. They like the fact that I go to the gym and now we have some exercise equipment in the house that they jump on sometimes. But, um, 
friends and stuff, it's been touch and go, man. I, I got to tell you, when I started changing my mindset and how I did things, some people, the people who are really about you, the people who really support you, are going to support you no matter what. They're going to ride with you. And the people who don't, the people who are just content with being losers, that's what they're going to be. And like, there's a lot of people in my life, unfortunately, that I've had to just walk away from. You know, I just couldn't deal, couldn't deal with the constant negativity, constant toxic attitude, all that shit, you know, and it's, it's said, you know, like people that were at my wedding, all that stuff, like I don't talk to anymore, but it's part of the process, you know? Yeah. I think people you surround yourself with are the people that you, you're really going to become, you know, yeah. if you become, 100%. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not a hard concept to really understand if you're in an environment that's a negative environment and not going to push you to be your better self, then you're not, don't expect to rise to the top in that environment. You need to surround yourself with other people that are going to push you to be number one, to be the best that are, are going to encourage you to be better than them. Yep. You know, so when it comes to your diet change, did, did you just do this kind of all by yourself? Did, was it all kind of like self discovery for you? The whole entire thing and uh, like is was self discovery. As far as so I just tracked calories straight out for about like six months or so. I don't know the exact time period. You know, there wasn't like a light switch. I'm gonna do this for six months and then do something else. Right. And I rode my bike. All I did was ride my bike and track calories for six months. And then it came to a point where I was like, you know what? My office where I was, I was the field intelligence officer in a command was right above the precinct gym. And this gym sucked. Like, it sucked. You know, there wasn't that much equipment. But I sat on the bench with a pen and paper, and I said, and the bodybuilding.com app, and said, okay, what kind of exercises is going to do? I could do this. I could do that. All that stuff. And I literally made a program for myself and just started slowly. And every day, I, you know, I would come in, I'd lift weights. And then after that, I like re changed my diet up to the point where I was eating like a little bit more protein because I was lifting weights and all this stuff. And then I just kept retooling everything. Even now, I'm still retooling a bunch of shit. Yeah. Did you ever consider any type of surgery? Or no. And I'll tell you why. I have. I am super anti-surgery. Um, Love not it. Any, because my mother had it. My um, and I've had two cousins that had it. I've had a lot of family relatives that have had it. And guess what happened? They all completely failed. They all ate through the surgery. My one cousin, he's on his like second or third uh, weight loss surgery right now and uh, can't never learn how to eat, never learn how to control, you know, exercise self-control, all that stuff. Um, he, and if you don't learn that self-discipline, if you don't learn how to eat properly and control yourself and do all that stuff on your own, having that surgery is just going to temporarily help you to lose weight because it's cutting off, you know, your system. It will literally actually make you sick if you eat too much, so, but you never learn how to control yourself physically and more along the lines mentally to control your habits. And like at baseline, we're all genetically programmed to be addicted to food. Like, we're addicted to salty, sugary, like, you know, sweet, fatty foods because in nature we were animals and that's what our body wants to store energy. So unless you learn to control those urges, like mentally, you're never going to fucking do it, no matter what kind of surgery that you have. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think the mindset side of fitness in general is, you know, I mean, they say my abs are made in the kitchen. I think your body is made in your own mind. Because if you're able to control, self-assess, track your calories, people like to overcomplicate fitness. And this is what I think is probably the funny part. And I'm sure you could definitely agree is, you know, I never really big, big on supplements. I take creatine and protein and that's the extent of my supplement list. Um, I, I really try to tell people, <laughs> let me go back a little bit. When someone is new to fitness and the first question they ask me is what supplements I'm on. I tell no. time out. I know. You know for a fact that it's going to be a long conversation. Because oh, yeah. you got it's it's I go, okay, look, and I know people that spend three or four hundred dollars a month on supplements. I'm going, have you ever with that money, have you tried a meal prep service? Literally, tell them tell them your macros, 
Mm -hmm. They will build it for you, eat them, save your $300, try it for three months and get back with me. I promise you, you're going to sleep better. You're going to look better. You're going to perform better because supplements there are to supplement food. And I think people sometimes forget that. And I'm sure you get that a lot. And how do you try to tell them that's not really an optimal way to to move forward? It's funny because like, Yes, I, I'm affiliated with like First Form and like all this stuff. And like people would think that I'm like, I try to sell supplements. But if you look at my page, like literally all I do is I'll be like, yo, this is what I take. I honestly don't give a shit if you take it or not. I don't care. Like I'm just telling you, I, and I would never like put something on somebody that I would, that I don't take. I don't, I don't fucking do that. I'm, you know what I mean? My credibility is like everything to me. So whatever. But when people do it all the time, oh, what are the, besides supplements, They'll go more specific when they message me. They'll be like, what fat burners work? <laughs> Pump the brakes. Absolutely none of them work. How about that? Yeah. I don't give a shit what company makes them. Yeah, they may give you a little bit more energy here and there and stuff like that, but they ain't going to burn the fat. If you're not doing the work, if you're not doing the diet, if you're not drinking the right amount of water, if you nothing is going to happen. And like you said specifically, they supplement food. I take pre-workout because I'm addicted to caffeine. I take protein like creatine and then like a multivitamins and like Perfect. shit like that. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I don't, That's just basic I don't shit. really fuck around with that. And the truth is when it comes to protein, I don't use it all the time. I don't use it every day after a workout. If I can't, and like you said, it supplements food. So like if I can't get to a meal for two hours, then I'll have my protein shake. But if I can get to a meal right away, I'm eating food hands down. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> And that's where I, I think a lot of people don't understand when it comes to, I say, I say a lot of people, people that are trying to make a change and trying to put on the weight or trying to lose the weight. You have to look at it from a research-based perspective of how does someone actually lose the weight? And it's not some fucking fat burn. Just like you said, there are great supplement companies out there that have a great product. And there's, I have not, I 100% support those companies if it's, you know, if it's a good product, but when people start, people that don't understand that world start to see fat burners and testosterone boosters and all this stuff, when sleep is a phenomenal testosterone booster, sleep, eight hours of sleep, seven hours of sleep. I know it's hard in the law enforcement profession to sometimes get that, but that will boost testosterone tenfold more than some fucking pill that you don't know where the fuck it's actually made. (laughs) Yeah, most testosterone boosters don't work. They don't. You know what Facts. I mean? And I, I would say like, not that most of them don't work. They all don't work. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it is, weird. you want to, you want to, you, you want to boost your testosterone, do some fucking squats in the gym, train legs. I guarantee you a lot of these people are not training legs correctly. Deadly. And they can't boost their natural testosterone or whatever. I mean, exactly. Um, it, man. Yeah. And, and food, stop eating shit. Like if the, the more shit that you eat, the more it fucks up your gut health with more it fucks up everything else that you got going on. Like, I, and listen, this is not stuff that I knew. And like when I sit here or when I go on my page and I start talking about this, I used to be the person who didn't know anything about this. And I'm, I've done all this fucking research on my own and learned on my own that like, you have to do all this stuff to make it work. Yeah. It's not, it's not rocket science. You can dive into the research and this is why, you know, I do talk to people that know more than me when it comes to this stuff, doctors yeah. and, but do, you got to be careful with certain doctors because some yes. doctors will, and I'm sure actually let's, let's kind of go back. What advice did doctors give you starting out? Um, no doctors gave me personally any advice, but this is where I, when I talked about the surgery. So my mother back when she, before she got the surgery, she went to a doctor to help her quote unquote, and this doctor immediately started shell- selling her like these protein drinks that she was supposed to drink. And then all of a sudden that didn't work. And then the same, this same doctor that sold her that shit was the same one who was going to do the surgery. It's just like this whole fucking scam. Right? What? And I noticed that a lot. Yeah. Yo. And I noticed this a lot and she's not the only one is that these people go to these doctors and these doctors want to do surgeries that people don't need. And like, listen, I'm not saying every doctor's like that the same way. Like obviously 99% of cops are good. 99% of doctors are good, but there's that 1% that are fucking going to fuck you up. 
and they don't understand healthy people. I'll give you a, 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 a good example. Most doctors are dealing, are dealing with sick people. They're used to dealing with sick people who are not healthy, and they're looking for a way to cure them uh, quick to shut them up, right? That's a lot of what it is, that. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And um, so what happens is they, instead of like dealing with people the normal way, what uh, so I went to the doctor the other day. I had my blood taken. They're like, your creatinine level is high. You got to go see a urologist. I'm like, my creatinine level is high because I eat creatine supplement. I eat plenty of meat and I work out a lot. It's from muscle breakdown. And the guy's like, well, just to be sure. And I know it's bullshit. I know it's normal because I've done this extensive research myself. But the doctor doesn't give a shit. The doctor still is not used to dealing with healthy people. They're used to dealing with the people that they have with high creatinine levels are like 80 fucking years old who aren't working out, who don't, you know, it's. Know. Yeah. It's just like so, the yeah. whole BMI thing. Um, yeah. I was always told I was, was I too high or too low? I think I was too, I think I was too low in BMI. And I mm-hmm. go, well, I'm, you know, I can run a, a six thirty mile. I can deadlift well over twice my body weight. And you're telling me that I'm, I'm I'm not healthy enough. I you know I eat good foods. I work out regularly. I watch what I eat. I drink plenty of water. Yeah, well, but your BMI is too low. I yeah. think your BMI is too low. I mean, I, I mean, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where I get you're a medical professional, and I'm not trying to dock it. But when it comes to performance of, I guess you could just say athletes when when it's people that are trying to perform at an optimal level they're not going to be what people consider normal, right? I mean, you look yeah. at Olympic athletes. I mean, they are, they're top tier of their, of their sport. And I'm sure if they were to take a BMI test, I'm sure they'd probably be below. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's just, you got to watch where you get your information from and do your own research. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing your own research. You know, I mean, just go no, just don't go down the rabbit hole of, you know, web being every yeah. symptom you have, and then you have, you know, brain cancer in your thumb or some bullshit like that. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so crazy when it comes to medical professionals. I mean, I've had doctors tell me things and I'm just like, you know, about my blood work and, and stuff like that. And it's, well, I mean, I eat a lot of, how much protein do you take in a day? I was like, well, I, you know, 180 grams of protein a day. That's, a, that's, that's too much compared to who? Ethel, that's just like you said, 75 years old. I mean, but for you, you know, doing the whole self-discovery thing, how did that kind of translate into your work? Did you feel like you became a better police officer as you were kind of discovering yourself as, hey, I'm dropping the weight, I'm feeling better, I'm getting stronger? Did you feel yourself become a better police officer in the sense of physically, not necessarily um, yeah. work-wise? Not only physically, but like, you know, less, honestly... And I have this quote that I always put up when I, you know, teach a class too, is like through hard physical challenges, like your body becomes like mentally, I can't remember the quote, but mentally and like spiritually better, like I, less shit bothered me. Like nobody on the street can get to me. You can't like, you can't talk to me and touch me. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't, <laughs> work. I'm just unaffected, you know, like I don't right. get triggered by people anymore or anything like, I, you know, I, but in, in that regard, yeah, you know, I think about things in a lot uh, in a different way, and uh, it's definitely helped me like focus um, better. And because I am taking care of myself and I'm doing something outside of work, it makes work more enjoyable because I'm not always doing work, you know. Right. And I think you brought up a great point, and I think I remember that quote you said. It's something about nothing is going to be as hard. Like if you had a hard workout, it's not going to be as bad as somebody talking shit to you, right? You're like, Hey motherfucker, I just deadlifted, you know, a five by five yeah. right before I had this conversation with you. And that was way harder than us talking right now. So you can try to fire me up, but I just busted my ass for 45 minutes. So carry yeah. on, sir. You know, it's kind of one of those things where I think it does give you a sense of confidence when it comes to, you know, your ability to process information better because one, you feel more capable, you feel, you feel more confident, but man, it's just a great, it's just a great release. It's a great way to just 
kind of be grounded, hang out with your boys, put your music on or put, you know, or put no music on and just kind of vibe out in the gym, man. I, I do look forward to those days when I can walk. So I have a home gym. I walk out in my garage, listen to whatever I want to listen to and just start stacking on plates. Like there's, there's, it's just, it's like my church. Yeah. No, that's great. I'm, I'm jealous that you have your own gym. I don't Dude, have to tell you right now. That was the best fucking investment. I started about two and a half years ago, three years ago, and just Facebook marketplace fucking everything. Awesome. And, and that was one of the best investments I had I've ever made. I especially with the whole COVID shit going on, they're shutting down gyms in which I do want to talk to you about your little trip. You took, I guess this past week you took a trip. Um, how was that by the way? Let's go ahead and get into that. So how was that? It was awesome. So it was a Tillis gym in Belmore, New Jersey. Obviously everybody knows Ian Smith from like Fox news and stuff. Right. Ironically, the first time I met him was in January before COVID. I was down in South Jersey. When I first got to the unit that I'm in now, they sent me to South Jersey for a resiliency conference and it was like an FBI resiliency course. So I was there and I'm like, I don't know where to work out. So I went on and I'm like, Hey, where do I work out? Oh, a Tillis gym. And I had been to like one of the other ones. This one is obviously is owned just by him. The other ones are owned by another guy. I didn't know that at the time. And I went there and the guy who was so nice, he like left me like supplements at the desk, like whatever. And I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. And then like a couple months later, this whole shit happened. Uh, with him and like, yo, good for him. I support him 100%. I support any, all these businesses. I think this whole shit is fucking crazy. I think it's ridiculous. But like, it was awesome. We went down there. Uh, my actually, it's funny. The guy who he's a police officer. I'm a co- I'm a sergeant, but I would consider us partners uh, in the unit that I'm in now. He's the one who organizes all these charity events through uh, the company. So he set up this. He decided to do it this year there. Because, uh, you know, he met him before and stuff. So we went down there. Uh, first form flew out a bunch of people that work at headquarters. They drove down a truck 13 hours there and stuff. Like, uh, took photos and whatever. But, um, listen, he's awesome. I have nothing but love for that guy. I really support him. I, as I support any business trying to do the right thing, it is uh, a fucked up time for small businesses. I, it's funny. Is everybody feels bad for, uh, for me as a cop, right? But no, I'm getting paid. I don't give a shit. I feel bad for two groups of people, small businesses and comedians. Because small, oh, businesses, small businesses are fucked. They can't open. And comedians, because nothing, nobody thinks anything's funny anymore. Every, nobody has a sense of humor. Everybody just gets pissed at <laughs> you, know, like, you can't joke. You can't joke. And, I've, and even if you try to have a conversation with someone, a legitimate, intellectual hopefully beneficial conversation. And then you say the wrong thing or you say it in the wrong way and people flip the fuck out and you're just like, I didn't know. Sorry. Yo. Just, but, but you know, but just like you said, the whole small business thing, man, this country was founded on fucking small businesses. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it's founded. And now it, it does bother me to see police officers out there enforcing these shutting down business, as it should, it fucking bothers me too. <laughs> Dude, that's I, I, so what I'm saying. And, and what's so frustrating for the good cops out there that are saying, we're not fucking doing it. The sheriffs that are standing up and saying, we're not enforcing this bullshit. Like, you can, so the governor can keep his business open, his small business open, but you can't keep a gym open to fucking keep people healthy <laughs> so that they don't die from COVID. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And then it just becomes about control. And I think, I I think that social media, there are some really good pages out there that are saying, look, most cops are not mindless robots enforcing these tyrannical orders, right? It's just some of these cops literally are following orders, but they're not police officers in my mind. I don't consider them cops. I consider them fucking, fucking cowards, dude. I mean, how, how can you do that? I can't even, my, my moral compass would just go fucking crazy. And what's fucked up to me, right, is like cops or other poli- police supporters who really don't understand and who just think whatever. But um, they're like, yeah, but we're the cops and we have to enforce the law. I can think of like a f- like <laughs> tons of fucking stupid laws and regulations that, A, I was told not to enforce as a cop, especially in New York City. And oh, yeah. that 
don't do every day, that we don't do every day that we fucking ignore because they're stupid. And if we went after every little fucking thing, it, it's not good for anybody. No. I mean, the amount of laws that exist in this country that are completely asinine laws. And this is the thing is discretion is there for a reason. And I think now some people are starting to, you know, say, well, cops don't have that anymore because they're enforcing these laws. Again, I can't speak for all cops. Just like you can't speak for all cops. I can speak for the cops that don't enforce bullshit orders that are literally taking food out of people's mouths and food out of their refrigerator and gas out of their car. I just, I have a problem. I have a problem doing that when I see just the, just the hypocrisy of some of these people making these, they're not laws. That's, 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 that's another thing. They're not laws. Well, me too. Like this is going back from like when I was, when I was a rookie cop, I don't know, maybe I just became a cop for a different reason. Like I became a cop out of necessity. It wasn't, just like was like oh you're gonna find a job or get the fuck out the nypd is paying twenty five thousand dollars a year at the time they were taking anybody i'm like fuck it that's what i'm gonna do you know i wound up loving it and enjoying it and being good at it but i never had the mindset of like i don't know like even writing tickets i pull over a hundred my goal was to find bad people all right so i pull over a hundred people a night and like honestly they'd all be doing the same shit they'd all be doing something illegal and the fucking one who earned their ticket by being a dick that's the one who got it I never fucking, and that's it. It's really honestly that simple. Like, yeah. I, I don't, listen, that's just me though. I can't tell anybody what to do, but no, no, you're right. <laughs> this is the thing is, and I had somebody asked me a question the other day about the 10 round magazine capacity in California. And I was never a cop in California. I've been to California. I've been to LAX one time and it smelled like shit. So not a huge fan of LA. However, as a, as a, a police officer, my job was to, just like you said, bad guys, bad people, not law-abiding citizens. You know, if you're, if you have, if you have a, if you have a handgun with a 15-round magazine, and you've done nothing wrong, and that gun's legally owned, it's 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 yours. Have a great day. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm not, you know, the whole Second Amendment shit going on. The whole, uh, you can't you can't have your business open with you know you only have five people in there, man. It's it's just twenty twenty is just a what the fuck year for for America and yeah. especially for law enforcement because at first it was man we support the cops so much because of all the you know all the riots that were going on and now it's like quit being fucking redcoats again and it's. <laughs> 48 hours just went by and now everybody hates cops because, you know, because a small portion of law enforcement are enforcing orders that they should not be enforcing. And man, it's, it, it, it has to suck for the good cops out there. It's got to suck for people like you, man. Yeah. I think most people know, you know, like that it's just a small portion of cops that are doing this shit. The same way, like when you see some fucked up shit, like, that some cop does and you're like, damn, that was fucked up. You know, like most people, most people know other people always just had a bad opinion of cops to begin with. And now they're just using whatever new excuse that they have to just not like cops. It is what it is. I mean, anything, any profession is the same way. We're yeah. just the fucking, you know, nobody likes authority and we are the authority. Yeah. So people are just not going to like us. You know? Put it on my tab. I, That's kind of how I see it. No, exactly. I don't take it personally if you don't like cops or if you don't like me, whatever, especially if you're not willing to have a conversation with me and, you know, you're just going to tune me out, then it is what it is. You're perfectly, you know, feel how you feel. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't affect me. At the end of the day, I have enough confidence to know that, A, I know who I am, and B, I'm not this uniform. I'm a person with this uniform comes off, and I know what it it is what it is, you know? That's so interesting you say that. I had a conversation with someone yesterday in the DMS and sometimes I will entertain a few just so I can see their stance, right? Just cause I, if I understand the person is having is wanting to have a conversation and even though they're on the opposing side of, I guess what they would think is my argument, I'll actually hear them out. And I actually, I want to hear their well-established argument. I was talking to a 37 year old about the incident that was, I believe in Oklahoma, or Ohio that I posted about the guy, the white guy that was in the car and he had a gun and he 
touched the gun. He didn't, I guess he went for the gun and the cops and he pulled his hand away and then he just drove off. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't see the page, but I did see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he said, uh, I guess Jamie Foxx, the movie star posted on his page and said something about double standard. And he goes, well, you know, if this guy was black, he would have gotten, he would have gotten smoked. And I said, well, what, what evidence or facts can you use to prove your point? I said, he goes, well, just from what I, just from what I've seen, I said, just from what you've seen, where he goes on the media. I said, so we're not going to take into account that it's an entire different situation that we could not see what the officers were seeing that we had no idea. We saw a three minute clip of a situation. He goes, well, what would you have done if somebody have would have touched the gun and after you told him to step out of the vehicle, I said, well, they would have probably gotten shot 99.9% of the time. I said, but let me ask you this question. Do you think those officers were willing to risk their life for that guy? He goes, well, I don't think anybody wants to get shot. I said, my point exactly. So you're telling me that you think these cops are willing to get shot instead of, you know, instead of having to escalate force to a situation where they were going to get shot. Well, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. I'm just like, well, I asked him, I said, where do you get your information from? He said, well, literally, he said two words. He said the media. And so that's, that's yeah. where, and, and I'm sure you've seen it on the streets. People will come up to you and ask you questions. Do they, yeah. do you get people as a sergeant, do you get people coming up to you, the public coming up to you and asking you your opinion on certain things? Not only do I have them come up to me in the street, I have them message me uh, in my DMs and ask me my opinions on things. And listen, I'm very forthcoming. If I, I don't give a shit. I will give you my opinion every single time, you know, but, but yeah, they ask me my opinion on just things all the time, especially like fucked up police incidents. And then I have people who hang on who like, I'll have an argument with that, not an argument, but like they'll see my way with one thing, but then they'll see something else. They'll be like, well, they'll just DM me. Well, what about this one? Well, what about that one? Well, what about this one? Like, I don't have time for that. I, I, I will sit there and I will like have a conversation with you like about stuff, but you know, yeah. not consistent. Not when you're just like looking for things to just like get mad about and like be like, whoa. Yeah. When you get those trolls, man, I, I get too many of those. And you know, again, I get a shit ton of DMS. I had to learn to limit those cause I was spending more time looking through <laughs> And the DMs people, and I'm sure you've gotten it too. There's some weird motherfuckers out there. Yes. Some weird motherfuckers. I mean, I've gotten everything from dick pics to fucking, yeah. I mean, all kinds of weird shit with animals. And I'm like, what the, who the fuck do you think I am? Like, do, oh, yeah. what, do I put off that fucking vibe? <laughs> like, I don't know. I hope fucking not. But at the same time, you know, being a, cop in New York city and current climate, you guys had it pretty rough. Would you say it's kind of starting to, I don't want to say normalized by any means, but do you feel like since, since the riots, you guys aren't having that many more riots anymore. Are you, or the, no, it's, no? it's been quiet for a long time since that first really? string, there was like sporadic ones here and there and like protests here and there. But, um, it's been, it's, Quiet it down, knock on wood for now. I mean, we'll see what happens now. Tomorrow. I mean, so, yeah, tomorrow, <laughs> the next day, whatever. Things are always changing. You know what's funny is like my office is right across the street, pretty much from Zuccotti Park, where, where uh, Occupy Wall Street was. So, like, I walk by there sometimes and I'm like, yo, shit is always going on. Like, wh whoever the fuck the president is, this shit is still going to go on. Obama was president for that one. Trump was president for the oh, Nothing, like, le legitimately, this shit is just going to fucking go on. Like, and it, whatever, you know, we just got to be prepared for it. But it was pretty fucked up, man. I mean, like, seeing some of that imagery and all that shit and people just bent out of shape, like, fueled by the media and the lockdowns and all this stuff, man. It's just... It was like a it was like a perfect storm, not in like the sense of a good perfect. It's like a bad perfect storm with COVID, the lockdown, the election, you know, the George Floyd incident, the other incidents, you know, it's, it's, it's just been, it was, it was uh, just a time for law enforcement. And, you know, a lot of cops have lost their lives uh, this year. Yeah, no. Um, 
from what I kind of consider senseless violence. You know, it's, it's, it sucks, man. Cops are now a target when, I mean, I guess cops have always been a target, but I guess probably more now than ever. And I blame the fucking cell phone. <laughs> cell phone media. And this is why I hate it. I, I am not a big like video, like, you know, like police incident video thing on either right. side, but because we've all been in these situations and like we fuck shit up and we don't do things perfectly. And, you know, you, and you're only seeing like one, one hundredth of what the situation entailed. And that's what, they're like some fucked up shit happened to a cop or a perp or whatever. Like video people take video as being definitive evidence because you can see it, but there's no context. If you don't know the context of what the fuck is really going on in this video, you can never possibly understand it, you know, or interpret it. It's like right. anything else. And then cities burn. And that's right. what it's that emotional justice versus legal justice. And people want the legal justice now. And this is the thing is what's, is what's so, Frustrating is whenever I do come across someone that saying, well, what do you think about this situation? Cause I do get that a lot, just like you do. I'm like, well, that was the cop fucked up. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what else, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, the cop definitely fucked up there. Well, why isn't this cop in jail? He is. <laughs> I mean, and, and then like, oh. you act like you're going to go lock him up. Like, I, <laughs> right. I and it's like, they blame you when you're trying to talk to them. Yep. It's, 100%. it's, it's absolutely, it is kind of frustrating, but I guess it is time for the good cops to say something if, if they are asked a question by somebody. And again, it's a legitimate conversation. It's not somebody just fucking trolling. Have that conversation because they're going to take that conversation and have it with five more other people. And that's try to, and that's kind of how I try to do it. At least that's kind of how I think I, in my mind, that's how I do it. Yeah, no, me too. Not only that, but like if some fucked up shit happens and like I decide that I'm going to call attention to it for being fucked up shit, I do it. I call, listen, I call everybody out. I leave no, nobody is untouched. Nobody's like safe, bro. Up, yeah, nobody's safe, including nobody's myself. Safe, if I fuck up, I'll talk about it. If somebody else fucks up, I'll talk about it. Absolutely. Like, you have to address those situations. Like I was trying to tell somebody the other day is like, if your aunt comes over for the first time, or whoever it is, a new relative comes over for the first time and they bake the shittiest pumpkin pie you ever had in your life and you're just nice to them and you tell them that this pumpkin pie is great, you're going to be eating that shitty pumpkin pie for the rest of your fucking life until you address that situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And everything, yeah. is like, everything is like that. You just have yeah. to have an awkward conversation realistically and be like, hey, listen, your pumpkin pie isn't that great. If you want to help make it a pumpkin pie, let me help you out. Like, that, Things will get done so much better that way. You know, yeah. I just, well, I'll just, yeah. yeah. Or I'll just give you 20 bucks and we'll go buy a pumpkin pie. Exactly. And then we'll just spend some more time together. You know, I think, I think that's a great analogy and people need to be a little bit more forward and a little more honest. And this, the thing is cops are not experts in everything, right? People think they are, but right. when it comes to certain things, cops, you need to ask questions. I ask, dude, I ask so many questions. I probably piss people off. I mean, I, Everybody that had everybody that I've had on this podcast, I literally feel like I'm interrogating from my own goodwill and my own knowledge base. I'm like, hey, so, you know, so how'd you do this? You know, so how do you become a better shooter? How do you become better at jujitsu? How do you become, you know, I mean, how is your mindset? Because again, I can't, I can never put myself in your situation. So I have no idea what my mindset would have been if I was in Aaron's situation at 425 pounds. I have no idea, but I want to know. Like, I want to know that process that you went through. I want to know you know, why you started teaching classes. Let's actually get into that. What classes do you keep saying training and classes? What classes do you teach? Uh, it was a resiliency class for younger cops, for newer cops to teach okay. them how to become more resilient. Or I was, my part was just a, a part of it when it came to fitness, nutrition, and mindset. And pretty much I had to get them into the mindset of like, nobody's, I'm people have this mistake that like, I love the job or that I had this love affair with the job. No, I just refuse to let the job and the shitty things that happen to me while I'm here at work be the things that fuck up my whole life. Right. That's what has to you know The job's dead. The job may be dead, but you still work here and you have to make it out to be the best that you can or leave. That's it. So it's about how to be more resilient and, uh, like, you know, use physical fitness to become more resilient. Um, 
you know, how to meal plan throughout your day, how to take things and let them affect you less, how to consume less bad things on social media, as opposed to like just going down the rabbit hole and just, because what most people do on social media, whether they want to admit it or they're not, is they just, they claim that they don't want to be upset, but they definitely pick out everything that makes them upset and then just go look at them, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they're like, oh, well, we don't have a choice because I saw the social dilemma and they told me that they're doing – like, listen, you have, a, you have some choice because I have some choice. And there's people I don't follow. Even like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of law enforcement accounts I can't fucking even follow because they just post like a ton of like negative like us versus them shit that I can't like get down with. No, them. fuck that, dude. Yeah. Yeah, no, I am I, – I hate that shit. I hate that us versus them mentality. Right. Us, us versus them when you're talking about bad motherfuckers, sure. Yeah. But when it comes from, you know, us versus them as in the public, absolutely not. That's, that's not how, that's not how any of this works. No, that's, that's not going to solve a problem. That's not going to lead us down the path of solving the problem. But just like you said is how do you, cause I know some people, they have a social media addiction and I've, there've been times where I was, I've kind of told myself, put your fucking phone down. You're done. You've had enough. How do you determine when you've had enough? I mean, it depends because it's very, it's, it depends what situation I'm in. If I'm home, I try not to look at it as much at all. I mean, maybe I will answer messages from people. That's about it, but I won't scroll through and uh, I don't get a crazy amount of messages, so it's fine. But um, when I'm at work and I'm just sitting around, like sometimes like I will literally like feel like, all of a sudden, I just feel like, wait, what am I like? I'm just feel overwhelmed, and that, that's why, I, honestly, why I started. Like, I made a website. I'm doing this fucking going to make some t-shirts. Going to start training people online is because I found myself that I was wasting so much fucking time just scrolling through social media, doing nothing instead of actually doing more shit that I could be doing with that time. Exactly. Uh, I noticed that about myself. It's not easy to notice that though, especially like if you're in the social media world where you feel like this is my way to build my brand or this is my way to like contribute or to communicate with other people to like whatever. And like, you got to realize like, are you really doing that? Or are you just scrolling through social media? Like you're looking at things, you know, it's a, it's a balance act for sure. Like, no, it's, it's definitely, and I've, again, I've, I've definitely caught myself mindlessly scrolling on Instagram. And then I realized I got so much other shit to do. Yeah. You know, I got, I got so much, I got to cook food. I got, you know, I got to, I got to answer emails. I have another call. I have, you know, I have to prepare for a call, man. It's, it's one of those things where scrolling on social media doesn't make you a doer. Just want to be no, very clear on that. It makes you think that you're doing something, but you're really not. Yeah. When you, <laughs> when you, when you like that motivational quote, <laughs> Right. It, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. It just means you're motivated to sit on your ass and your fucking thumbs doing work. You know, it's, it's actually, that's actually a really good point. So you have your own podcast. What is, what is your podcast called? It's called the notorious HFL. Dude, fucking, why haven't I been on this podcast? I haven't had anybody on. That's why what? I, it's literally like, it's just, you? Not, it's just me. I want to have guests, right? But like, I don't know. I'm nervous about having people on. Like, I don't know how to approach people about like having them. People think that I'm on social media. So I'm like this like giant extrovert and like all this shit. I don't know. Like I just, I don't like to bother people. So like, I'm like, ah, you know, they're probably busy. I don't want to bother them. All this shit. You know, like I'm a weirdo. I, no, man. No, man. I, you know, just like I told you that conversation that I had with Andy about it. That's kind of how I felt. I just didn't really make it a priority. And then, You'd you would be very surprised how many people if you were to say, Hey, look, send me a couple of dates that you're free and I'll see if it works for me and let's schedule time to talk. And man, I mean shit, that's how I that's how I started talking to you. I said, I love this motherfucker. He doesn't give a shit. He's fucking in the gym, picking up shit, putting it back down multiple times. I need to have this dude on the podcast. And he's a cop in New York, like, fuck yeah. So I just I just reached out, man, and I've it's been a learning experience to me. This is the second time I've used this beautiful mic here. I, oh I had God. some Amazon shit. I said, you know what? Let me invest 30 fucking dollars in a decent mic. And if I like doing podcasts, then great. I'll keep doing it. If I don't like doing it, then you know what? I wasted 35 bucks. But 
episode one, two, and three, and four started coming out, and I got so much feedback, man, and that just motivated me. It's, man, I love your podcast. I listen to them at work. Can you help me with training? And one thing, I love getting other people's perspective. I wanted to do this podcast to get people like you out here. You know, I had been blessed with the platform uh, on social media, but I, I, again, I'm not all knowing. I'm just one dude. I've, I have one experience. You're mm-hmm. one dude. You have one experience. But with our experience combined, we now have some something, hopefully, dude, if one person takes something away from this, from you, fucking success. This was an hour and a half well fucking spent. Yeah. That's it, man. So, dude, I'll be your first guest, bro. All Sign right. me up. You just send me uh, some days that work for you. And, I, man, I, I enjoy having conversations. This is actually therapy for me, believe it or not. So I enjoy, like, man, I, I enjoy it more than, probably more than I should. It's funny. I, I saw I saw like a tweet from like a, a a woman, and it was like, "Men created podcasts so they could finally have a meaningful conversation with with each other." <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. I'm like, ah, there's some, some legitimacy to that, probably. It's, you know? it's so true. I mean, I've done one podcast with myself, and it was just people were asking me. They were asking me how I kind of broke down my training for different things when it comes to law enforcement, and kind of with what I've seen in the research I've done. And that was the only one that I've done with myself. And I feel very weird. I, it just feels weird. Hell, I don't know how you do it. Talking to myself about this. Like I'm having a conversation with myself. So I feel like I'm, well, you said you're weird. So that, that, that definitely makes sense there. But yeah. like, <laughs> it's just, yeah, it just, it just feels weird for me to talk to myself. But man, I, uh, I can't wait to be on your podcast, man. I got, I actually need to listen to it. I listened to a, I was actually listening to a podcast you were on. Um, it wasn't yours. You were a guest on something. It was, uh, what did I say? It, was, it had like the word traffic stop in it or something like that. Reps for responders. That one. Listen, if you, I, I'm not going to hype anybody up, but like have Frank is a good dude. Yeah. Uh, recovering uh, alcoholic. Now he's an alcoholic counselor. He opened up a gym where pretty much it's mostly dedicated to like first responders. It's like a gym, but it's like an AA type thing for first. Respond- Yo, the guy's awesome. Like it, legit. Like I, if, if you're looking for guests ever. Oh dude, I'm always looking for guests, man. I I'm booked yeah. till February, which is awesome. That is awesome. It is. It is awesome. And this is something that I, again, it's therapy for me, man. I love hearing people's, stories i love being able to get them out there to other people again if one person can benefit from the conversation you and i just had about where you started about how you had a a dream to your fucking bike tires went flat dude i I can't even again i can't even fathom that so but there i'm sure there is somebody i'm sure dude i know cops that are probably fucking pushing 400 um and I would love for them to hear this and say it's possible. I mean, you were how old? You, you say you were 35? I was 34 when I started. I'm 38 now. 34. You four years. You lost 170 pounds. Yeah. And Listen, you grind every... I fucked crazy. it up. Where I gained like 40 pounds back. I'm 30 pounds here. Like, Listen, that. you could do it. Just never give up. Just keep on going. Never fucking give up. Every day is a new day. Just like you get better. Listen, I know it's like cliche but just fucking get better every day. That's mm-hmm. awesome. dude. I, I, I love it. So Aaron, where can people find you? Uh, on Instagram at, at huge H U G E underscore fat F A T underscore loser. And then I have a website, Aaron Loman, A A R O N L O H M A N dot com, where I'm going to have shirts soon. I think within this week, we'll see. I don't know. Oh, hopefully yeah. it'll happen, but, uh, uh, that's it, man. And uh, never hesitate to reach out to me. Anybody listening out there, seriously, never hesitate to reach out to me. Send me a DM, a question, anything. Nothing is too beginner. Nothing is too stupid. Nothing. I do not judge anybody um, at all. Like I, we all start somewhere. And like, please, I'd love to hear from you, Aaron. It has been, dude. When I come to New York, which I'm supposed to be coming to New Jersey soon. Hopefully if it's open, if I don't, I don't even know the up, I don't know the Northeast, if anything's open up there anymore, or what you can and cannot do, but I'm going to come anyways. I'll bring my papers. Apparently it's a thing now. Yeah. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. No shit, bro. Yeah, well, dude, we, 
<laughs> so bad. It's, it's, I mean, we're joking about it, but it's like, this is fucking, this really? actually fucking exists. Uh, anyways, that's a different conversation for a different podcast with you, brother. But Aaron, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it, dude. You are a fucking inspiration to me and to many others out there. And oh yeah, what's the name of your podcast? Just oh, Notorious HFL. Notorious. I mean, that's fucking beautiful. I like it better than Notorious Big. Nice, hundred percent. It's more my game. All right, brother. You take care. Thanks. Take care. Amen. Yeah,